Hello and welcome, Estes County College family. This is the Virtual Cafe, episode 26. Now, not only is this the third part and the finale of Essential Success Tools for Essex students, it is also the season finale of our first season of the Virtual Cafe. We have 26 episodes. We're blessed to have had so many guests on the show during this time, but none more so than today's special guest once again, Dr. Robert Spellman. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Good morning, Joe. What a pleasure. College family members. <laughs> We're excited for part three of Essential Success Tools for Essex students. Last week, you had us constantly motivated, and we're excited to see where you take us today. We're talking about essential skills for college success, but we had a theme a few weeks ago, and I want to return to it because we are all under tremendous pressures. Those of you who are parents, those of you who are uh, trying to hold on to your jobs, those of you who go into jobs that have real challenges, those of you who work in hospitals, health-related, you have to be particularly careful. You have to wear masks, and you have to wash your hands, and you have to avoid uh, the dangers of this pandemic, uh, which is taking the country and taking the world. So when we talk to you, uh, family of Essex, I always say, Every person that works at Essex County College is what I call an encourager. Somebody that has to come. If someone's going to discourage you, you don't need to be around that person. We want to encourage you because you have such uh, a gift box of talents and skills. And many of you don't even know it yet yourself. So for today, I want to start off by emphasizing Turning back is not an option. You, you cannot turn back. You can't stop. You can't even recess. You can't even turn off to rest. You got to keep going because we are in a serious uh, time. Um, yet some great news came through this morning. Uh, the DACA students will be able to stay. And the Supreme Court just ruled and all those 800,000 uh, DACA students, all those uh, children who came through immigrants and came into the country, they say illegally, but they're here now. And President Obama went and he uh, created uh, where he, he allowed all those children to stay. And now they're in college, they're working, they're paying taxes. And so the Supreme Court, about four, five to four this morning, approved that, that what the administration was trying to do, send those people back, is not, they have a right to be here, and what a great decision that was. We're all very elated with it. Turning back is not an option. And here in Essex County College, we know that it's not just in New Jersey or in Newark, the Newark area, but we're the greatest opportunity center uh, in the whole community. When I say an opportunity center, whenever you can get an education and learn uh, not only uh, the academic subjects, but the skill subjects, then you're only improving your potential for earning. And you have children to support. You have people coming behind you, and they're depending on you uh, to help them through. Uh, you, if you know, they will know. It's an old African uh, principle that you must pass down. So uh, again, what a privilege, privilege it is to be associated with uh, one of the greatest institutions in this country, Essex County College. And when you can come to an institution like ours, fully accredited, accredited as well as a number of programs, and our tuition rate is nowhere near. You know, at New York University and at Columbia right now, it's like 60000 per year to go to that institution, whereas you can get the same 
and it's not better, you can get the same and best instruction right here at Essex County College. I want to start out by saying in the theme, turning back is not an option. There is uh, the phenomenon, and uh, we call it metamorphosis, but it is how a caterpillar goes from being a caterpillar to a butter, beautiful butterfly with wings. An old preacher told me a story one time. He said there were, there were two butter, uh, caterpillars, and they wanted to cross this road. And you know, they just inch along and go slowly. So, so one, one of them said, well, I'm going to cross. I, you have to get there the best way you can. So he starts out across the road. And here comes this big tractor trailer, comes down, squishes him to death. The other one stayed back to see what would happen. Squishes him to death. And he says, the one that's left, there's got to be a better way <laughs> to get over this highway. There's got to be a better way. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go into the cocoon, and I'm going to see uh, how I can develop myself so that I don't have to crawl anymore. And so he went back into his cocoon, and next thing we knew, you didn't see a caterpillar come out of the cocoon. You saw a beautiful butterfly, able to fly across the road, able to go above the storm. And so Essex County College, to be frank with you, is our development cocoon. We bring you in. You know, some of us are crawling on the ground, but you climb into this cocoon uh, that we call Essex County College. We try to develop your mind, teach you how to think, on your feet, how to rationalize, how to deduct, how to compare, how to express yourself, how to communicate. Boy, we're just working on you while you're in that cocoon that you're looking at. It looks small and it's compact, but you're in there. And I know all those studies and all those nights that you study, but it's developing you. And then all of a sudden, it's not only just graduation, but you come out of that cocoon and look at you, able now to fly across that road with no sweat. So turning back is not an option. Another point I want to make before we get going here is that a lot of people think they have to be first. I saw a man who happened to be president of the United States right now. He was walking with a group. And uh, somebody got ahead of him. He pushed that person aside so he could be first. And in our race for success and achievement, you don't have to be first, but you do have to finish. You can't stop off three quarters of the way. You've got to finish. And on the marathon, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but you, you have to go forward. And you have to uh, never, never uh, turn back. So last week, we talked a little bit uh, about those skills. And if you look down at the bottom of the uh, slide here, you'll see reading, writing, thinking, communicating, perception. That is a keen sense of awareness around you. Persistence. You're going to keep going no matter what. And then, of course, the big one, which is technology. You cannot achieve success at a college or university in these days, particularly during this pandemic, that you are not familiar with technology and the use of the computer. I don't advertise anyone, but they're out on Route 20. There's a computer place. You can get an iPad or use. They sell a lot of used computers and used iPad. You can get an iPad. For twenty dollars, but the point is, you need to make a connection with the online community, and of course, you don't have, you don't have to pay. If you have a, uh, an iPad, you can go to Starbucks and get on uh, their uh, network, and and thus go online. But being able to go online lets you open to a whole world 
of learning. Wow. I mean, I can Google anything and it will tell me what it is, what it's all about, and what it looks like. So you, you must master. There's no excuse. You can't get by without reading. You must read. And read your TV, read your uh, uh, books, read even film, read. But the important thing is you're educating that mind so that you read. And you should be able to see like seven words a minute as you come down a column. Uh, John F. Kennedy took a course on speed reading where he learned how to read 1,200 or, or 1200 words per minute. And his eye would come down and all he would do he read about seven or eight newspapers and would just come down each column. So if you're reading word to word, you're reading too slow. And if you're reading word to word, you need to understand what you're reading. So you must read. Get into uh, NewJersey.com. Where do you get your news from? Is it all on your telephone? And even if you have to get it on telephone, there are all kinds of news, free news apps that are out there for you just to keep reading, reading, reading. And of course, writing is a form of expression. And I advise every student to get what is called Grammarly, because I found out your Grammarly, when you're writing anything, will give you suggestions, but it will improve your writing. It will not just tell you what, if it's misspelled, it will improve your writing, tell you, well, you should use this word instead of that word. And then of course, Thinking is the whole thing. You have to learn how to compare. You have to learn how to look at things critically. You have to learn how to analyze. You have to learn how to, what are the pros and the cons uh, of a given situation. Then communicating, that's a five-step project. One, you have to have a sender, all right? Right now, I'm trying to send you a message. But two, you have to have a receiver. And that person has to understand what you're saying. If I spoke in Russian, there are people who are listening to me now who would not understand me. So I have to uh, speak in a language. And the, what we call the second phase is you have to have a receiver. You cannot have communication without a sender and a receiver. Then comes step three is you have to have a message. You can't just make noise. And number four, you have to have a mechanism which we call medium or media, which is plural. What do you use to communicate? What's the tool that you use to communicate with? Right now, I'm communicating with a slide, which is a visual, and my voice. So you have all kinds of things. You have movies, uh, you have illustrations. I just gave you about the butterfly to communicate uh, truth, to communicate. Uh, metaphors and things that you must understand as what I call an educated uh, student. Now, education isn't, there's some old people who never got out of the eighth grade, but they have what we call wisdom, and their life has been in education. They've been through things. So don't always think it has to do with degrees. Then you need, in my class, always have these exercises where we sharpen perception, awareness. What color is the bark of a tree? And you'll say, brown. Well, no. I, I want you to go back, and I want you to come back to class and tell me what colors you saw. And just about every color, you can see there are different colors that are in the bark of a tree. What does that do? Increase your perception. Then persistence. Uh, some people, there he is, back again. You go back to tutoring again. Don't feel embarrassed if you didn't get the concept. If you go to YouTube and you don't fully understand it, play it over again. And if you don't understand it, play it over again. And when you go to Khan Academy in math, 4,000 tutorials in mathematics alone. And what he does is work out how those programs go and you line up your math book, that black uh, heading, you line that up, type that into Khan Academy, and you'll see how to work those problems. And then, if you don't get it the first time, again and again. And of course, technology, which is one of my favorite subjects, because it is visual and it is fantastic. 
I can find out just about anything I want to. And if I want to go to the Louvre Museum uh, in Paris right now, I can go to YouTube and go right there. So we've been talking about these different skills. I want to come back to this chart again, but we talked about how you're much more than a piece of flesh. Really, chemically speaking, you're 70% water. <laughs> But you are a whole lot more than water. Your body and your soul and your spirit. What motivates you and your spirit? You got to be motivated. Your mind, your heart, your creativity. Some of you uh, can do paintings, pho photography. You have gifts you haven't discovered. You can sing. You can write a song. You can write a poem. You can write uh, a short story. Have you tried? And all we are saying is, you can't have a gift that's wasted. You've got to use it. So you got to set goals for yourself. That's the first thing. Where do I want to be uh, a year from now or two years from now? What are my goals? If I put down 20 goals, I'm already defeating myself because you should only really work on three at a time. But Tony Robbins says setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. You dream of that house, you dream of that car, you dream of that promotion, you dream of that. You have to have something that you're aiming at. Matter of fact, some of the people who talk about goal setting, if they, you want that car, you get a picture of it. So every day you look up, you see a picture of it. And then to know where you are, you need to be honest about where you are. There's no one, no way this guy here is going to tell me he's reached his destination. He's in a world make-believe. And so therefore, you've got to be realistic with what, where you are. Yes, maybe don't read as well as you should, but then be honest about that with yourself. And then go, and I have a pastime where I go to, uh, um, I'll go to um, Barnes & Noble, and they have a coffee shop in there. And I'll go and get some magazines and some books. And I'll just go. And, and I'll have about 12 of them. And they don't expect you to buy all of them. But while I'm having my coffee or cappuccino, I'm going through. And I'm thumbing through. And I'm looking and having a very enjoyable experience. And then all of a sudden, I discover something I want. So I will buy one of the 12 or two of the 12. So you want a good pastime. Go out to Barnes and Noble and look around. Look at all the books they've reduced. Matter of fact, if I hate to say this, but I, if you go to the Metropolitan Museum, you don't go in that bookstore and pay a hundred dollars for the book. You go in Barnes and Noble and you pay twelve dollars for that book. See, there's a way uh, of doing it cheaper. And we want to talk about uh, books too because a lot of you pay very high prices for those books. And you can get ebooks, you can rent books now, you can do all kinds of things. All geared up for you succeeding and running in this race. And every step, every day, and every night that you move, you're still moving toward a goal. We had a student at Essex a couple years ago, he had nowhere to live. And we discovered him, the security would get on him, they'd have to turn the lights in the bathrooms because he would be, he would sleep somewhere differently every night, sleep in the library, and they'd catch him up there, and then they'd sleep, find him in the bathrooms, and that student graduated, and is now going on to graduate school because he persisted. So I gave you this the other day, you're going up the river, but if you drop off or stop off, you'll never be where you want to be. You can't just dream. You got to get up from that bed and take your suitcase you got to work. So there's no turning back. You can't turn back your years. If you're getting old, you're getting old. I don't care how you paint up. You're still getting old. Time is <laughs> <laughs> passing by. And so here we have uh, a story that another old, old preacher taught me uh, from Texas. I'll never forget that. And he said to me, that an elephant in India, certain place in India, uh, baby elephants born, and they take a big chain, and they put that chain around the elephant's ankle. 
and they uh, tie him to this big post or this big building. And he grows up and gets stronger and stronger. And when he's an adult elephant, Abel, 30 times more powerful than he was when he was born. And he's standing there. They take a little rope, a little, little raggedy rope, so that he just feels the rope around him. And they tie him up with that. So in other words, the chain is 20 times more stronger, but they use the rope. And what is it? In his head, he is still tied to that post. And here he has the power to tear down the whole wall of the building. I mean, he, could, he, can, he can come through and the farmers in East Africa, and I've seen an, an elephant can move. An elephant can get up to 50 miles an hour. You don't play games with an elephant, but they have power. And uh, we know how they went over the mountains and won wars against the Romans using elephants. So you got to have a mark, not too many, but you got to have that goal that you're pressing toward, you're reaching toward, and aiming at, you're pressing toward a mark. Even those I told you about the handicap and how they help each other. When one goes down, the other one picks the other one up in the Special Olymp Olympics. So you must finish. I'm sorry. You got to finish. And then, too, some of us try to carry loads that are too great. I hope you're taking this in, students, because this old professor, you know, I'm trying to tell you, it's like I was taught. Well, those people said, now, nah, I want to show you something, son, or I want to uh, teach you something, son. I want to point out something. And you will always uh, appreciate your mentors. Always appreciate a mentor or somebody who wants to add to you, not take away. If they start tearing you down, and you're this, and you're not, nothing, and what happens, then you don't want to be around people like that. You want to be around people who encourage you. But some people have a weakness in carrying too much. And uh, they carry a heavy load when, in fact, uh, that load has to be uh, measured. That man you see there, boy, I have to give it to him. And when I go to Africa or I go to the Middle East, I see women who carry big baskets on their heads. They balance the water jugs on their heads and they put, put them aside. But see, uh, uh, too much weight on you can pull you down. What am I talking about? I'm talking about life's baggage. Some of us worry too much. And I always tell people that I work with in council that yesterday, don't, don't carry a grudge from yesterday. Yesterday is gone. You have to move on today. And I always have students repeat after me, today is the first day of the rest of your successful life. I have next step students who have just been released from incarceration and they come out and that's behind. What can you do now? Where are you going from here? You're stronger now than you were because you learned how to be tough. So you get rid of some of life's baggage and grudges, and you holding a grudge that's years old holds you back. Uh, ways in which and the word sinful, you can go about it in many ways, some people, but you, it's the way you live. You have to have uh, a life that works with your chemistry. And you have uh, people who envy you, but you can't envy people. That takes up. Your time, jealousy, can't be jealous. You're as good as anyone else. You can't be fearful all the time. And it keeps in discouragement. Discouragement is one of the best tools. And we're not in church, but I heard one one time that the devil had a garage sale and uh, he was selling everything. He was selling uh, burglary. He was selling all kinds of evil things. So on the shelf up there, it had uh, discouragement. It was a flea mark, had discouraged, but it said a little sign on it, not for sale. So they went to the devil and they asked him, he said, well, how come you're not selling discouragement? He said, that one works best for me. I can keep people from going forward. I can keep people from going to work. I can keep people from going to school. 
I can keep people from going forward. You understand what I'm saying, students? That discouragement, you can't have it. You got to press your way and go on to the mark. Put those grudges aside. Put those grievances aside and go on because uh, this is a new day. It's not the same as yet. I put that pride. Some of us are too proud. But be humble enough to be a learner. So how'd you do that? Can you show me how you did that? And, and one guy came in, I asked, oh, that's a beautiful machine. Can you show me how to do that? The guy ran me out. No, because you'll take my job. No, I don't want your job. But you want to learn everything you can learn. And we had students in our print shop at Essex County College. They, they needed money in graduate school, and so they would work for printers at night. And they had that skill. So if you're going to start up the ladder, then you got to be determined to go all the way. Turning back when you're halfway up the ladder or halfway up the mountain is not going to do any good. <laughs> Leave your shoes down there, but you've got to make it up to the top, and you got to have uh, faith in yourself. But I feel like I'm talking to uh, someone out there, maybe it's four years, maybe it's four months from now, but you'll take in what I say because what we're trying to do is encourage you. You can make it to the end. You got the energy, you have the smarts, you have the creativity, you have the power. And so yesterday is gone. Don't be held back by yesterday. In the record, don't, don't be held back. And uh, today is the first day of the rest of your successful life. So you got to put your eye on that goal, something real, something to strive for, something to persevere for. What's the sense of going halfway up the steps? Either you go all the way. And so the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of determination. It's a lack of um, motivation. And so you got to, you have to walk through. Sometimes you have to stay up at night and study at night. And one of the tricks I had when I was in college, I would be tired. My brain would be tired 10 o'clock at night, what have you. So I would go to bed. But then I would wake up, put the alarm clock at four o'clock, and the dormitory or the house would be silent, and you would go, and your mind is fresh. You might have an apple or a banana uh, or something of that nature, and then you can do your homework. It's quiet, and you can your mind is rested, and you can do the very best. But look at this guy's face. It's very motivating to me. That's whose face I see when I look at you. And you need to see that face when you look at me. That guy is determined. Look at him. That guy is not going to give up. That guy is going to keep going. <laughs> that guy's going to keep climbing. He's going to keep moving. Look at that, that vigor. He got it in his mind. I've got to finish this race. I can't tell. I may not always see where I'm going, but I've got to keep going. i got to know where I am. And I have to have a destination. And I have to know I'm ready to go through, whether it's raining or storming, in my life. And one day I'll look back and I'll say, you know, how did I get over? It's because somebody said something positive to me. Someone said something that motivated me. Someone said something that uh, uh, allowed me the motivation to go over. You no know, motivation is very important. I don't know if I told you this, but I saw a python snake one time when I was right out of college and we went on a hike and I saw a python snake. Python, they don't bite you, they squeeze you. And there was a wall not too far from me. I still don't know how I got over that wall. <laughs> but when you're in a state of fear, you can you find out you have strengths you didn't have. And I got over that wall. And so it is with life, that bar, you got to go over it. Can't let it hold you back. You got to get over that bar and you got to make it for yourself. And so here are the final questions. This is it. Who are you? You really need to know who you are. 
you may think you a certain way. Many times you got to get people's opinion on what they think you are. You know, it's not always. I know someone, his ego is so big, he thinks he's the smartest, greatest in the world. And the people who look at him just shake their head. You need to know you. That's very important. What are those things you like to do? What are those things that you do well that no one else can do it better than you? And sometimes a girl discovered in one of my out of the next step, she can make sweet potato pies. And she went out from Essex and started a business, a, a restaurant, but it's a business where she just sells sweet potato pies because she knew a special recipe. She was a specialist. And many cooks and chefs and restaurants are hired because they have these special recipes. So who are you? Do you like working outside? Do you like working inside? Do you, can you sit behind a computer eight hours a day or must you be outside? And I'm what you call a Rogerian counselor, students. Rogerian kind of see, uh, there's a, a counselor that takes over your problem. I'm not gonna take over your problem. But then there's the better counselor who becomes a mirror that reflects you back to you. So when I ask you, what are things you do well? What are things you like to do? What are things that make you feel good? What are things that make you excited? You start answering those questions for yourself. So how do you view yourself and your future? The man that started, the, what's the ice cream company? Uh, your, ben and Jerry's? Huh? Ben and Jerry's? I think so. He was 72 years old when he started it. And he would show his commercials and he would, I think he's passed this about 20 years ago. But he started the business when he was 72 years old, you see. So here you are with your youth. You really have a wealth that people like uh, Trump or Rockefeller, they don't have. They don't have the years that you have. And we don't have those years. So so what is the your picture? How do you see yourself 10 or 5 or 20 years from now? Where will you live? Who and what kind of life will you live? And you've got to define that and work toward it. And so what will be my defense is never to return to bad judgment, bad decisions, and unproductive activities. You can't make a U-turn every day. You can't be excited and persistent one day and then turn around, make a U-turn, and sleep the next, and then go back and make another U-turn. You got to stay on course and you got to compete. Even though everybody has a, a disadvantage, you got to compete. And it, it doesn't belong, as I told you, with Lindbergh. Lindbergh had to go across the ocean, first man to go across the Atlantic uh, on a solo flight. And you can go and see that plane and you'll see it. There was a point at which he could not go back to New York. He had to keep going. It was further back to New York than it was to Paris. So don't look back. You're going the right way. You're going the best way. And then you hand off what you know to the next runner. See, you have children. You have relatives. Hand off that baton. Hand it off. I made it. Now you run. And what you're doing is both of you are running at the same time. So it's my pleasure uh, to finish this motivation session. And the bottom line is turning back is not an option. All right, students, we hope you found that informative. That was Essential Success Tools for Essex Students Part 3. This was the finale of this session with our wonderful guest, Dr. Robert Spellman. This is also our season finale of the Virtual Cafe. We know it's been a pretty trying time for everyone during quarantine. We hope you're doing well. We hope your family is doing well. We will be back returning with the virtual cafe next semester. We hope to see you all then. We'll have, we hope to have Dr. Spellman with us, of course. You think you'll be back with us next semester? Well, God willing. You have to always say God willing. <laughs> but I know you'll be here. But I, I always say I had the best job. I want a faculty member at Essex. We have the best job in the college. So we'll look forward to it. Awesome. God bless you.
God bless you. And God bless all of you at home as well. We hope everybody's staying safe as New Jersey begins to open up its business. We remind you to please be cautious of everything outside. Be safe. If you're out there and you're expressing your voice, please be safe. And we will see you all next semester. Take care.